Hi, everybody, and welcome to your morning mug. Today is Sunday the 5th of April. Um, as you can see, today's format is just a little bit different. Um, I'm using a particular uh, educational technology called Screencast O Matic uh, because what I wanted to talk about today actually um, will do better if you're able to see what I'm doing. So, um, <clears throat> no background fancy audio. Hopefully you can hear some of the birds chirping. I'm sitting outside on my deck on this chilly, chilly morning, uh, but I thought outside would be a better location for today. So just a few reminders. Feel free to send me any of your favorite celebrities. Uh, I'm gonna be doing some stuff with that later this week. And we have some celebrity birthdays today. Happy birthday, Betty Davis, um, the, the actress, and of course the classic Betty Davis Eyes is going to be added to my Spotify playlist. The link to that you can find down in the comments. And happy birthday, Booker T. Washington, author, educator, orator, and a very influential American. So um, thinking about them today. <clears throat> so um, one of our This Day in History has actually inspired me to put together what I'm going to talk about today. And <clears throat> excuse me. Um, someone asked me, you know, what is your process for putting these morning mugs together? And I said, I literally get out of bed and I make myself a tasty hot beverage and I start doing some Google searching, just seeing what's you know, going on in the world, uh, this day in history and so on. And something sparks and I just run with it. So, um, today's episode, episode 21, art for thought. Um, and I was playing with some logo makers. I don't know if you like that one or not, but I thought it was kind of fun. So uh, a few of this day in histories, uh, 1955, Winston Churchill retires as prime minister. Um, and I, I brought that because he was just in that book that I finished reading. This day in history, 1621, the Mayflower departs Plymouth on a return trip to England. And another English connection, 1614, Pocahontas marries John Rolfe. You know I'm a Disney person, and to all my Disney friends out there, she did not fall in love with John Smith. John Rolfe is who she married. Um, and I started thinking a little bit about Pocahontas, and then I was reminded of one of my favorite resources out there. That is the Smithsonian Learning Lab. I have a link down in the, the comments. You don't have to be a teacher to access it. The Smithsonian's working on digitizing all of their collections with their 19 different museums. Um, but this particular one or, or series of images I'm going to show you is from the National Portrait Gallery, one of the most underrated of the museums, but you need to go when they open up again. Um, it's absolutely worth it. So we're going to do kind of a little mini lesson here, going to deep dive. So I'm going to have you take a look at this for about 30 seconds or so. Try to see as many details as you can with this image of Pocahontas. Get close to your screen, see how many of those details you can pick out. And now I'm going to switch to another image of Pocahontas. We're going to repeat the same process. Try to dive in and spend quality 30 seconds just picking out as many details as you can. So here's the second image. So there are definitely some significant differences between the two. I don't think either one fits most of our uh, interpretations or understandings of, of Pocahontas. We think of that Disney image um, with that long straight hair and just 
this, you know, this grand presence. And I'm not saying that Pocahontas didn't have a grand presence, but these two portraits are part of the collection with the National Portrait Gallery. And I just find them absolutely fascinating. Let's zoom in here on this one. This is an engraving. So if you zoom and try to take a look at what she's wearing, we get this impression that this, this detail in this brocade down here, it's almost like she's wearing armor. You can see this very intense dog collar like uh, lace, a single earring. See, she's holding an ostrich feather fan. And generally, when I show this to students, they're not overly um, emotionally pulled into it. They're just kind of like, oh, what? Okay, this is not what I interpreted. But if we zoom and look at a more detailed portrait of the, the painting, her features are much softer. We see the illusion of this, the, the, not the illusion, you actually do see the collar, but also we see this layered type look between her two outfits, uh, different from this heavy brocade or even an armor type feel versus something that's soft, velvet-like. She's holding the ostrich fan in both of them. Here they are side by side. Ostrich fan in both of them, that awkward kind of placement of the hand. So if you were to take a look at the text down at the bottom, <clears throat> um, Rebecca, by the way, was the, the name that Pocahontas took when she converted to Christianity. And all the way down at the bottom, I'm not going to move my cursor because that little bar for Google um, Slides is going to show up, but you can see wife of um, on the side with the engraving, wife of John Rolfe, Mr. John Rolfe, and on the other side, Mr. Thomas Rolfe. So we start to get a lot of questions, <laughs> not just in why are there physical differences between the two, but also why is the text different? So here's a little bit of context. And for my American study students who might be watching, remember context is that background information that helps us truly understand what we're talking about. Normally, <clears throat> paintings would have been done first. The, the oil portrait would have been done first, and then engravings would have been done after for this, not quite mass production, but more easily accessible um, of the content. In this case, the engraving was done first. Um, it was part of a book um, that was published around uh, 1616. The goal of it, it was kind of like the equivalent of People magazine. <laughs> um, it had kings and queens and other notables of the time period. Pocahontas being one of them. You can see she's very westernized in both of them. She's anglicized, she's Europeanized, and meant to look like, you know, a member of the court. The painting was actually done later. You can see her cheeks are, are much softer, the cleft in the chin is gone, um, softer in, in the eyes. It's believed that this portrait, we, we know it was done after uh, 1616, but that it was done for her family to pass down through the generations. So Pocahontas did come to the New World with her husband, John Rolfe, and their young son, and she was presented to uh, King James at the English court. So um, I, I just, I love showing these, not only because they're part of the Smithsonian collection, they're here in the United States, that once things open back up, we can go and see them. Um, the portrait is on display at the Portrait Gallery. It's on the first floor. Um, and there is a, a recreation or a, a like a photocopy of the engraving that's next to it. It's only put out for a few months at a time just because it is on paper and it's extremely fragile and delicate. So um, I think art, some people, you know, when you go to an art museum, you're just so overwhelmed because there's so many things on the walls that you can go and take a look at. But if you force yourself to stop, force yourself to look, and when you think that you're done, look a little bit longer, you can start to see a lot of similarities and differences. And I always love to think, why were these particular choices made? So when I think of Pocahontas, I've now trained myself. When I think of Pocahontas, I try to think of the engraving because it was taken from life. Um, the art historians at the Smithsonian have discovered that Pocahontas did sit with the artist in order for the engraving to be made. So it was made from life, which to me increases that level of, of accuracy and authenticity as much as possible. And the painting, the oil painting on your left, was made out of a, a copy from the engraving. So I'll put just a few links down in the comments. The Smithsonian Learning Lab, so fun to just 
take a look. Um, I do have a collection of other images of Pocahontas um, that I put together on there, and I'll make sure that you have that link as well. So enjoy your Sunday. Do a, you know, a little bit of food for thought, a little bit of educational learning. Um, I can already feel the sun is warming up a little bit. And so please, until tomorrow, till I see you again, behave, be good, be kind. Please continue to recycle. And for the love of all of us, wash your hands. All right. See you later. <laughs>